in that text in you know it is it's not a matter okay so here actually i have covered uh, earlier cushioning the poverty impact of the crisis uh, reducing one of the food crisis then recognizing that pandemic is not a gender uh, neutral so that is the thing i have uh, i think uh, shown that slide uh, so uh, there actually we have stopped it uh, that after it uh, we are having that uh, credit uh, facility uh, here uh, i think you have seen it i don't know where uh, that thing is uh, disturbed uh, or uh, whatever the thing you have covered i don't know exactly so when we think of the supporting migrant workers i think that can also have cover after that strengthening informal enterprises micro enterprises and small uh, businesses so with that here we have how to uh, what is the condition of uh, accessing the credit uh, that thing i have actually shown that here i think you may observe here we are having two gender that is a female as well as male so in what way the countries are having the conditions Uh, related to that, uh, how they are going to access the credit. So, in some extent, uh, male are having uh, more uh, than uh, female, uh, but some countries are having female is also more. So uh, that is the thing here you are going to see. It. So, in in these, so many of these measures are uh, time bound, as well as uh, will cease to exist once the health emergency is over. Yes, of course, in some extent, to avoid going back to business as usual. and uh, conversely to build back better there is a need for systematic change measure aimed at rebuilding better should be guided by sustainable development goals and uh, tackle three domains key in achieving that is one is gender quality another one is human uh, capital one more is security there is the need to mainstream gender equality and women's empowerment into all policies to ensure that the burden of any future crises does not continue to be borne disproportionately by women yes the united nations uh, gender equality marker provides a monitoring and uh, accountability framework to facilitate the integration of gender into development activities and programs what actually here we are going to say means by having this crisis most of the movement movement to the to women uh, category is highly disturbed uh, i think in, in some extent they may be in uh, indoor uh, life so that is the thing here uh, we are having so with that uh, uh, we are going to considering this slide so another one here in what way the it supports to migrant workers the next slide i think uh, it relates to that uh, migrant workers in you know, how uh, it supports to migrant uh, workers i mean uh, here you i think you are seeing unweighted average share of foreign born workers by health related occupation so the midwifery personnel nursing personnel medical doctors dentist pharmacist i think you are seeing here Uh, in this i think you can understand because so many are working by that particularly in medical field uh, most of the i mean uh, workers are working somewhere else uh, they are not in their station itself they may be out of state or they may be out of country so for them the many migrant workers are manual employees in construction or domestic or tourism services and those continuing to work face challenges due to the nature of their work in following uh, physical distancing and uh, confinement measures but migrant workers with uh, insufficient social protection many need to work ever uh, if ill and uh, protection for migrants are uh, uh, therefore important in order to uh, protect uh, everyone uh, at the same time many migrant women or workers in essential health services often also caring for the elderly and this export exposed to particular health risk but actually it says here so those who are working uh, outside of course suppose if they have like this uh, situation pandemic situation for them i think it's very difficult to manage because they have to work there itself along with the risk that is the thing here it says uh, likewise if you have a look on this slide here it is a impact of pandemic confirms uh, 
uh, selected the indicators that is the thing here small medium large uh, type of uh, companies here uh, share of the firms that uh, experienced decreased demand by demand for products or services likewise uh, share of the firm that uh, experienced decreased supply of uh, inputs likewise uh, share of uh, firms that uh, experienced uh, decreased liquidity or cash flow availability just to have a look on that how what is the condition of small a medium or large. So here the large is having only 37 uh, the percentage at the same way, the medium is 57 and small is 62. So impact of a pandemic highly affected on that uh, small scale uh, uh, type of industries. So that is the thing uh, here we have to understand. So with that view, uh, we can say uh, consulted and uh, coordinated efforts are needed to enable micro enterprises and uh, SMEs uh, to better recover from the crisis. Supporting such enterprises has been important part of the pandemic related uh, relief packages of governments in uh, many countries, yes, of course. Some policies apply to enterprises uh, in gen general, while others target uh, micro enterprises and uh, SMEs and their uh, employees specifically. Uh, specific policy instruments uh, aim to change working arrangements, such as by shortening working times and providing sick leave to ease uh, liquidity constraints, such as with regard to rent, uh, utility, social security, and uh, debt payments, and also uh, provide uh, direct financial support. Suppose if you have like this, there I think it is very easy to manage uh, that uh, a situation otherwise uh, may have some problem with the industry or company so that is the thing uh, here it says uh, the next thing we are considering sir, that uh, sir sir uh, 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 slides hogta illa mo hogta illa and ig aglilva agilla sir ig aglilva illa sir aagta illa sir illa access access to credit anta ashte bartta ide sir ellarige illa agide shreyas illa andre avrige share agilla ankonde sir avrige aa maadilla anset namge how the how sir? I can go to the other side. I can go to the other side. Ah, 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 ah. Sir, there is a technical one. Sir, there is a technical one. I have to listen to it. Let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Yes, let's go to the other side. Okay, sir. That's it. International Tourism Revenue. Yes, International Tourism Revenue. Yes, International Tourism Revenue. A share of total exports. Yes, okay, sir. Yes, sir. This is actually what we are going to consider under here. Mitigating the effects of the pandemic on tourism. That is the thing. Here, how to mitigate. That is the thing here we have to consider. Uh, here we have a data related to international tourism as a share of total exports. Selected tourist destination. We are having some places to uh, see here. I mean, which is very popular uh, in a tourist way. Uh, we are having Fiji, Montenegro, uh, Jamaica, or the Samoa, or Barbados, like that, uh, there are uh, which is very famous cities uh, to see as a in terms of uh, tourist spot. So, that is the thing. So, what actually, in what way we are going to uh, mitigate the effects of the uh, pandemic on uh, tourism? That is the thing. I mean, uh, mitigation means you know that how to reduce the risk. So, that is the thing here we have. So, with this, uh, just you consider here. Uh, we have some data related to that exports also in what way. So all are coming down in that is the thing here it says. So here in the medium to long term, government should build economic uh, resilience to shock by building productive capacities and uh, transforming their production and export structure, particularly towards manufacturing. Uh, that is the thing here we are going to consider that uh, tourist in what way we have to attract that is the thing. So here uh, in uh, Likewise, governments may seize the opportunity created by the crisis to strengthen the efforts to diversify their economies and uh, lay solid foundations for sustained growth and employment creation, as well as to enhance the capacities of their economics like, uh, to absorb uh, like these shocks. That is the thing. It is important to note that implementation of such policy should uh, complemented by enhanced health checks on travelers to ensure that the infection rate uh, due to the virus does not increase uh, with uh, negative consequences for the health system, government budgets, and growth. 
uh, in this context uh, there is a need for international coordinations to ensure that short term uh, response to the crisis do not the create uh, long term economic problems in developing countries that is the thing uh, i think even uh, we are also experienced with this uh, where we have like that uh, the foreigners come to our nation so at that moment uh, most of the moment we are having a very big fear with that one. so th th that that may be the reason in that way we have quoted also uh, actually it is, uh, we don't know exactly but there is there is in that way here uh, we have to think on how to mitigate that is the thing here it says so these are the things uh, it is related to the second uh, aspect likewise now how financing the response and recovery from the pandemic in developing countries so here we have to focus on uh, direct macroeconomic situation uh, limits uh, external financial support uh, likewise official development uh, assistance in times of crisis remittances in times of crisis debt sustainability international responses concluding uh, remarks related to these uh, issues so first you consider that uh, uh, actually it is dire macroeconomic situation dire uh, it's not a direct actually it's a dire uh, macroeconomic situation uh, dire i think you may be aware of uh, uh, where we have some um, uh, urgency or uh, seriousness uh, which is uh, a very quick or uh, immediate that is the thing die die the mac microeconomic situation uh, that is i think you may see this slide here fiscal measures in response to the pandemic by country group so there uh, we are having a share of gdp as well as amount of uh, amount per person so related to that uh, developed countries developing countries and uh, underdeveloped or uh, developed and uh, transition economics that is the le least developed uh, another one developing, one more developed and a transition. So according to that, in what way it is changing, that is uh, additional spending or uh, foregone revenues. Uh, likewise, at the same time, uh, in what way the liquidity support, that is the thing it's give, it gives. Here we have to consider in what way the developments and the complex financial dynamics they create uh, will challenge the capacity of developing countries to serve and maintain their debt in the face of increased financing requirements with regard to responding to the uh, multifaceted crisis uh, created by the pandemic. Uh, in the wider context uh, of uh, responding to the public health crisis, developing countries have relatively greater health and uh, social protection expenditure requirements uh, due to their uh, weaker health system and uh, response uh, mechanisms. Consequently, uh, they require greater external uh, liquidity support in foreign currencies to pay for vital imports while also servicing their outstanding debt obligations. Uh, with this, I think uh, we can manage uh, that thing. So the pandemic situation. So likewise, here we have, I think we are going to see that uh, in what way the global health security in uh, 2019. Uh, just to have a look on this here, high income developing countries or middle income developing countries or low income developing countries in what way they have the situation that is the score right it has a, a given by the uh, some board so with that here we have security uh, that the health are uh, here just, just go through that the circle prevention detection response health system norms risk in that way we have so 80 60 40 the, there is a score uh, it has given so here uh, the same way uh, we have the thing uh, what actually it is happening so that is uh, where you think of that high income developing countries or middle income developing countries or low income uh, developing countries that is one wing that is uh, we are having the same circle the same way you are going to apply that is uh, transition economies uh, least uh, developed countries small uh, stand uh, uh, developing uh, states or uh, debt service suspension uh, initiative so according to that the scale is changing i think you are understanding. So what actually this communicates? Uh, we can say uh, in some, uh, I think considering some index results across developing countries, uh, groups reveals a significant shortfalls across all six areas, whatever we have here, the prevention or detention or uh, response or health system or norms or uh, risk. So that is the thing with low income countries 
as the most vulnerable in responding to epidemics and uh, pandemics. That is the thing. Yes, of course. Uh, furthermore, crisis response and mitigation measures will divert resources away from the efforts of countries to achieve the goals. In some extent, this thing has happened. As the priority will be restore public health, uh, countries will need to make difficult choices with regard to pursuing other objectives of the uh, 2030 agenda for sustainable development should uh, they not receive additional assistance. I think you may be aware of that uh, disaster uh, management fund, uh, know what they are going to use. I suppose if, if not that find, I think in what way our country may be faced with the situation, that thing we have to think very seriously. Uh, this is the thing it says actually. Uh, now you just consider that is official development assistance in uh, times of crisis. Uh, when you think on that, that is the country is uh, most dependent on official development assistance and other international financial inflows. There we are having that is uh, officially developed uh, uh, countries in that way. I mean, uh, that is the thing here we are having uh, that is uh, under pandemic situation that ODA inflows, uh, remittances and FDA inflows. So here we have, we have some uh, countries that is the least developed countries. Uh, or Kiribati. So there are some names, you know, I think you may be aware of. So the, these are the things here we are considering that thing. So in the context like, uh, uh, what actually in what way we have to think on this that is revamp revamped international cooperation is much needed with the development finance architecture at a at a crossroads a marshall plan in response to the pandemic would send an encouraging signal that the time to invest in building back better and differently has not passed yes of course it is noteworthy in this context the multilateral donors have stepped in with uh, additional resources. International financial institutions and regional development banks have reacted by mobilizing and uh, redirecting significant additional resources. Moreover, multilateral efforts have been made towards combating illicit financial flows, in particular those that are tax motivated and uh, originate from uh, cross-border multinational enterprises. There is a concrete risk uh, with the followed from the pandemic will not only entail serious setbacks in achieving many of the goals, but also worsen entrenched inequalities. This is the thing is happening. So it's not so easy to overcome. So that is the thing here it says. So with this, uh, we can consider. Now you are having one more slide to see it. Here, international financial flows to developing countries by group and type of flow. Means here in what way remittances in times of crisis. That is the thing. For least developed countries as well as other developed countries, in what way that remittances or net ODA uh, receipts or uh, foreign direct investments so we are focusing uh, that in the period like uh, 2020 uh, up to I think 2019. So here we have the data. So related to that, uh, here actually in what way uh, uh, remittances are happening. So that is the thing is that. Uh, likewise, uh, we have another one that is countries most dependent on uh, remittances and other international financial inflows. So here, uh, uh, the, the, so the net ODA inflows or remittances or FDI inflows. Suppose if you see the period 2018, 2019, so there also some uh, countries are given. So in what way they have uh, get the remittances that, I mean, in what way they have considered the remittances uh, co concept. So likewise, uh, we have that debt shocks also. So this is also one of the important thing we have to focus. Here, long-term public and publicly guaranteed or long-term uh, private non-guaranteed or private non-guaranteed or short-term uh, debts, you know. So there, I think you are uh, seeing it. In some extent, uh, short term is more uh, comparing with uh, long term. So that is the thing here it, it has given. So the same way that for developing countries, credit or uh, composition of external long term public and publicly guaranteed debt. So here also we have uh, some uh, category that is official creditors, that is multilateral, official uh, creditors, that is bilateral, uh, private creditors, that is commercial banks private creditors, uh, that is bonds, other uh, 
private uh, credit as we are having. So here also you are seeing the uh, data. So related to that, uh, in some extent uh, you can understand uh, that is the thing here uh, it's going. Uh, now we can, uh, that is a test uh, here. Actually we have to think on in what way we have to sustain the debt. So that is the thing here uh, we are having. So likewise uh, we are having uh, another data related to uh, developing countries groups, external long-term public and publicly guaranteed debt uh, that by the creditors in uh, 2018. So here, uh, who are the uh, persons uh, rolling in that other private creditors or private creditors, commercial banks or uh, private creditors, bonds, uh, official uh, creditors, that is multilateral or uh, official creditors, uh, bilateral. So in what way they are low income developed countries or middle income developing countries or high income developing countries, in what way they are going to uh, remit, that is the thing here you are going to understand. So, uh, I mean, with this, in some extent, we can uh, understand so how that pandemic situation is highly influencing in all these fields. That is the thing here we have understood. So the next thing, uh, even uh, you can uh, think on uh, this. So that is uh, when uh, private uh, non-guaranteed debt is dominated, so just you have the private creditors bonds, I think you are seeing that is 876.5. So there, I think, suppose if you think on that, uh, the non-guaranteed debt is uh, denominated in foreign currency. It essentially represents a claim on the country's international resource. Particularly when a private entities are unable to hedge their foreign currency liabilities against foreign currency assets. That is the thing here we have to understand. In this case, uh, private non-guaranteed debt denominated in local currency uh, that is held by external creditors, sudden re uh, reversal of external credit flows can undermine a country's just debt sustainability. That can also be possible. So private non-guaranteed debt denominated in local currency and held by domestic uh, residents represents uh, a contingent liability on public sector finances and can lead to widespread uh, bankruptcies uh, in the face of uh, exogenous shocks or the widespread uh, deterioration of the uh, credit worthiness of borrowers. This thing is also happened. So that is the thing here we are going to consider uh, by having these slides. So the next slide, uh, slide uh, related to that uh, making international production networks uh, more resilient in what way uh, we are going to uh, think on uh, the capacity to recover quickly. The resilient, I think you know that, how to recover uh, very quickly. So that is the thing, international production networks, here we are thinking. In this, uh, we are focusing on changing international production systems and uh, investment for uh, sustainable development. Uh, likewise, the leveraging technology to build uh, resilience and uh, accelerate recovery, ensuring sustainable and uh, resilient transport and uh, trade uh, uh, facilitation. Uh, on this, I think uh, we need to have some uh, conclusion also. Suppose if you uh, observe this slide uh, here, which is uh, related to international production in a perfect storm, the two with uh, 2020, uh, you can understand the trends arriving at uh, boiling point, uh, the same situation like COVID-19. See here, uh, new technologies, new industrial resolution that leads to changing economies of uh, international production. Uh, likewise, rising uh, protectionist uh, tendencies, new orders for international production, sustainability imperative uh, that leads to rethinking international operations of multinational, uh, multinational uh, enterprises. But uh, where we are in situations like that uh, COVID-19, because it's a sudden shock or a, a very big storm, we have faced it, immediate impact as well as longer term impact, suppose if you observe, Immediate impact on uh, production and supply chain disruptions, uh, global recessions. Uh, this leads to, I think, supply and uh, demand shock. Longer term impact, uh, I mean, with uh, imperable to increase uh, supply chain resilience, uh, pressure to increase a national uh, or a regional uh, autonomous uh, productive capacities. So this is the thing uh, we are going to see it. Uh, by having. So in that uh, trends in global value chains or foreign direct investment or uh, trade and uh, gross domestic products, suppose if you observe, 
that to in the period like 1990 to or 2000 or 2010 or 2019 now here we are going to observe the percentage you just see it i think you may understand that percentage is declining 35 30 25 and 20 now the 2019 it is coming down now. so this is the thing you are going to understand here so the thing here the color that is the gdp and the trade uh, you can understand so that is declining foreign direct investment uh, underlying trend is also there i think that can also coming down so the total global value that change uh, what we have that the share of uh, trade so it is totally uh, bottom level that is the thing you are going to uh, understand i think uh, we are having one more that is uh, relevance of network uh, different uh, uh, trajectories of global value chain configurations for selected uh, industries here we are having two things one is not relevant and highly relevant i think you can understand by having these uh, informations manufacturing as well as services the global value chain uh, intensive industries as well as geographically distributed industries and the services also we have uh, that is uh, what is the distributed uh, lower value added as well as constructed uh, concentrated uh, higher value added so there also we are having some conditions like uh, quarter or half or uh, off quarter as well as the full like that. I think here you are understanding that the reshoring or diversification or uh, regionalization or uh, replication. So there are some conditions to change the to high technology intensity, automobile, automotive or machinery and equipment uh, uh, as well as electronics. There you just consider reshoring is full, diversification is off. Uh, regionalization is uh, different and uh, replication is different. So that is the thing here. Uh, we are having some changes by the cause of this uh, pandemic. That is the thing it says. Uh, likewise, uh, we are having one more uh, situation that is impact of the pandemic on uh, FDI. That is the uh, transmission mechanisms that to 2022, 2030. So here also we are having some, uh, I think, issues to consider for indirect investment stuck uh, uh, during lockdown measures uh, with uh, tightening uh, margins for uh, reinvestment that is hindered by new investment uh, restrictions as well as uh, that is navigating a severe global economic recession of course we are annoying all these things uh, in some extent uh, even uh, this is heading towards increased supply chain uh, resilience and a higher degree of uh, autonomy for critical supplies so this is the thing so if you observe uh, you can understand here what actually the main impact on FDI. So it says here, here, here itself. That is one thing is slowdown of uh, implementation, uh, reinvested earnings, cross-border mergers and acquisition, drop in new investment uh, decisions or divestment. So these are the things we have seen by the cause of this uh, pandemic movement. So that is the thing here you are, I, I think you are understanding with that. So the next thing here, in what way we have to, I think we are disturbing with the project finance in goals related sectors. So developing economies as well as the LDCs. So here we are having some, I think, projects, that is power, power projects are they are renewable energy excluding. So we have renewable energy, transport, or telecommunications or water and CAs. So here also it is highly, I mean, influence uh, that uh, variations. That is the thing here you are going to see it. Uh, another one that is online behavior. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, now we are in that particularly. So here, the in what way they are going to say. So that is the thing. I browse and spend a lot of time on digital entertainment uh, sites. In what way they have spent their time uh, that too with the pandemic uh, situation. So there they have I mean, expressed their, uh, I mean, uh, experiences in that way. Some persons, I mean, 58%, uh, uh, they said it, I browse and spend a lot of time on digital entertainment sites. Another one, I am more frequently looking online for health-related information. That is also 56%. So one more says, I think uh, I am spending more I am reading online newspapers and magazines. That is also 51%. So I don't know how many are really. Another one, I am shopping online more often than before. Some extent, maybe. So these are the things uh, we have 
I mean, uh, experienced with some changes related to that pandemic. Uh, even you can think this was also that is key pandemic related challenges faced by the online businesses and uh, platforms in uh, developing countries. Yes, of course, I think you may be experienced with Amazon or Flipkart or uh, uh, Snapdeal. I think uh, where you go for ordering any product, they are not uh, providing the cash on delivery. Uh, because of this movement. Otherwise, they are very eager to, but uh, they are restricted. In some action, they have stopped also cash and delivery, only online payment. That is the thing we have uh, seen it. Uh, that is the, uh, so in that way, online business is also having some variations or uh, some conditions or some decline uh, uh, movements. So that is the thing here you can uh, observe. So uh, next one says that is most important measures taken uh, during in what way? So what are the things we have taken the measures in, in what way we have taken some measures that is the development of a national e-commerce strategy, more advertising for available e-commerce, uh, e uh, that is uh, skills training programs, reduced electronic payment cost, financial incentives and liquidity support, cheaper internet access, yes, we have maintenance of uh, logistic uh, operations, new e-commerce marketplace for uh, essentials, uh, new digital health and education solutions, new logistic uh, services, market integration, uh, integration of uh, informal e-commerce, uh, new electronic payment applications. Uh, I think you know that uh, e-pay, what is that? Uh, phone pay or uh, Google pay or uh, some uh, apps are also we have. And likewise, that is the, uh, new electronic payment applications is over increased internet connectivity in uh, uh, undeserved uh, uh, areas, initiative to get business online, new online consumer protection measures, new logistic services offered by the uh, postal services. So these are the things you have observed by having the situation. So that is the thing we have considered in one wing. Uh, that is uh, what we can say. Uh, making international production network uh, more uh, resilient in that way we can uh, uh, say you use it that is the one so another the last thing i think uh, trade as catalyst for a fairer and a greener recovery here of course trade as a transmitter of uh, market disruptive disruption uh, across the globe here unilateral trade measures worsened supply shortage of essential goods because of that pandemic COVID-19 market disruption, disruption hurt small firms and consumers. But this pandemic added a mixed impact on environment also. So these are the things uh, we can uh, observe. So for this, uh, we have to design policies to achieve fairer and uh, greener recovery through trade. So that is uh, enhanced transparency of trade measures, enhanced uh, trade uh, cooperations to address global health crisis, make the best use of the multilateral trading system, uh, empower competition authorities to prevent market concentration, enhance regional and international cooperation against uh, anti-competitive practices, prevent market concentration in the digital economy, protect consumers in the rapidly expanding digital market. This is the, uh, I think, uh, we have to think very seriously on this. Is it possible to have like this way uh, of course, there are some suggestions are uh, developed, but uh, we have to think on that. Is it possible to have in practice? That is the thing. Even uh, we have to consider. So likewise, uh, here uh, we have to focus on environment also. Environmental focus for greener and uh, bluer recovery. Increase uh, incentives to renewable energy. Not now we are thinking on that very seriously. Promote nature-based solutions. Uh, at the same time, it stimulus uh, packages. Uh, here we have to stimulate stimulus packages for fairer and greener economy. That is ensure fairness and uh, inclusiveness, maintain green or blue growth aspirations. These are all uh, a proposed idea, uh, but uh, we have to think on that whether it is uh, possible or not. Of course, some countries are already uh, initiate this issue uh, with have some uh, hopes. So that is the thing. Uh, in that connection here, we have to observe some slides like uh, global trade in uh, goods the stabilizers at lower levels, whatever the suggestions they have made it, you know, according to that, in what way it is functioning, that is uh, world trade here we are having. So there we are having that is quarterly growth as well as yearly growth. 
So in some extent, it is uh, growing that in the period up to 2018, this concept was developed actually. After that, uh, the 2019 is totally coming down. Now in uh, we are having some hopes in uh, 2020, that is a quarterly growth is possible in that way, I think you are observing. So this is the thing is going on, uh, whatever the idea they have developed. Likewise, even international tour tourist arrivals, that too in the period uh, to 2019 to June, January 2019 to June 2020. So here I think you are observing in what way that uh, the thing is uh, 2020 in some extent to work Asia and the Pacific. Uh, so it is totally declined here, minus figures actually we are having. So that is uh, rivals are also very low. And then uh, commodity price index also here, here you are seeing that is uh, artificial intelligence commodity groups uh, that is uh, we are having that is excluding uh, fuels as well as including that is the thing. Here uh, we are having some trend changes. Uh, now 2020 it is declining in some extent that is artificial uh, intelligence commodity groups are declining in some extent the managing that is another one that is uh, uh, excluding uh, fuels. So that is the thing uh, you are seeing. Uh, likewise, we have one more slide uh, which is related to this concept, the stock prices of leading technology companies. That is 1st January 22nd to September 2020. So here also we are having some uh, uh, technology companies, leading technology company, companies. So here we are, I think, seeing uh, that eBay, Apple, Amazon, uh, or uh, Tencent, or Microsoft, uh, everyone is having uh, their own way of uh, leading. So that is the thing here uh, we have. So JD.com, it is having a very good uh, way that is uh, uh, 200, more than 200. That is uh, uh, whatever the quarter or they have the, uh, fixed the period, the January to September means nine months. So there uh, we are having some progress uh, growth. That is the thing that too with uh, digital way of uh, business. So that is the thing here it says. Another one, greenhouse gas emissions and target reduction. So that can also we have because here we are thinking about that the green field. So with that sense here we are having some data related to that. I think uh, you can understand in what way it is functioning up to 2020. In some extent uh, a very low in the last year. I think we may have some hopes in uh, future. Uh, it may be developed. So that is the thing. So at the end, uh, we are going to think whatever the concept we have thought, uh, it's not enough. We need to focus ultimately on uh, sustainable development that goes directly addressed by the non-tariff measures here. So with that here also, we are having some uh, countries that is worldwide as well as Asia and the Pacific. So Asia is having in some extent a good condition that to with uh, some uh, type of uh, uh, what we can say that the industries are uh, activity. So according to that, here you are going to understand. So here, 46.6, that is uh, Asia and Pacific, we are having a worldwide, we are having 38.3. So likewise, if you focus on other uh, type of uh, industries or uh, companies, there I think its data is totally different. Even some extent uh, that is not developed also or declined. So with this, uh, what actually here uh, we are thinking about uh, the first one concept, that is the thing I said it, uh, uh, what actually the pandemic movement is influencing on the four issues, particularly I have taken that. So there uh, I said it that the pandemic on trade and development. So with that here I have a focus on slides and uh, say something on that. Uh, so to, finally we can say the pandemic has reinforced some of the trends which uh, preceded it uh, but has also caused massive disruptions and reversed other trends, of course. Global poverty is on the rise for the first time with school closures or uneven success to homeschooling and economic pressure on families, a progress in education, especially for girls may experience a setback of 20 years. This will have strong negative impacts on the productive capacity of countries well into the future. This is also an uh, enormous setback for development aspirations and for the sustainable development uh, goals. Uh, this is the thing uh, we are going to observe by having that uh, pandemic movement uh, that too on uh, 
a trade and commerce. So that is the thing one, uh, I have covered the issue. So now we can uh, think on that another issue that is pandemic uh, induced business trends. Trends. Now we are in changing world actually, uh, of course, uh, because uh, every uh, field economically, if you think or uh, technologically, you think or uh, even uh, socially, or culturally, so we are having some changes. In that way, in what way we have to preparing for ourselves for a new normal. That is the thing here it says. So uh, with that here uh, we are having. Uh, I think uh, try to understand what actually uh, we have to focus on this. Uh, that is, uh, we do not want to uh, linger on the negative effects caused by the impact of the crisis on economic or uh, uh, social factors. So we want to look ahead what actually the future. If we broaden our perspective, history has taught us that a crisis can also act as trigger for substantial growth. Yes, of course, I think you may agree with me. Organizations currently struggling with the short-term impact of the crisis. Uh, I think it should start uh, looking forward as soon as possible and capitalizing on the opportunities uh, this crisis created, whatever we have the situation, we should not always uh, putting that problem. We should overcome by that. In that way, we have to think. Organizations which are carefully observing current dynamics will see many trends rising. Some of them are triggered by major social changes or societal changes and will, will uh, impact our future for long time, the so-called uh, mega trends, we can say. Uh, here, the changes in consumer behavior, the technology changes, the company able to uh, leverage uh, these trends, uh, that is the thing here we are on it, and changes in consumer behavior, for example, the consumer trends we can say. So, and uh, market reactions also, that is market trends, these are already uh, clearly visible. Uh, technology will become even more important in uh, enabling interactions between uh, companies and their customers. That is technology trends, we can say. I, I think you know that now you can uh, browse anywhere, at the, any, I think, I think you can uh, chat or browse or uh, observe, that thing is possible. So with that, we can say uh, technology trend or changes. The company is able to leverage these trends will lead the uh, game in the post-COVID-19, uh, I mean the post-COVID period because they build the foundations to serve new customer demands. After an intensive response crisis management, our, uh, many industries are now shifting to recover pace in which they have to make uh, decisions for future growth. Yes, this is the thing uh, we are going to consider. So, uh, but, but uh, first leaders should ask themselves the following questions. So first we have to consider this thing. Uh, those who are leading it. How are established uh, industry trends affected by the crisis? So that is the thing we have to uh, consider in terms of answer. So that is the thing here that leaders has to, I mean, uh, raise the questions like this way. How can uh, digitalization be enable, enabler of uh, business optimization, uh, fueling uh, operational uh, fitness in initiatives in a uh, pandemic uh, disrupted industry. To what degree is social uh, distancing changing uh, consumer behavior and what is the role of digital, digital tools in uh, maintaining consumer, consumer engagement going for, forward? Uh, likewise, what might your customers for be afraid of the afraid in the future or what strategic investment should be made now to achieve long-term success? So these are the things we have to raise uh, uh, before, uh, I mean, uh, observing the trends. So that is the thing here it says. So we have, for this uh, here, uh, we have focused the four uh, trends. Uh, that is uh, four trend buckets, we can say. Four trend buckets. That is uh, mega trends, uh, consumer trends, a market trend, or technology trend. So here we are going to observe each one, one under mega trends we have to focus on. One is a disruptive regulation, a localization, presence-free living. That is the thing we have to observe that mega trend. Consumer trend, uh, that is digital social interactions, a value for money mentality, safety wins over privacy, 
community power the great uh, indoors uh, that is the thing and i in case of market trends so we have to focus on social responsibility generous corporate uh, agile beyond technology uh, virtual economy e-commerce push like that way we have to think on that in case of technology trend uh, we have to observe that uh, streaming contactless payment fast scaling commerce platforms like that see mega trends what actually we have to understand first mega trends are the main and deep drivers of change that is the thing they drive long term development in uh, major areas of our uh, society and its uh, underlying parts like the economy science culture or politics these trends are rather stable and new mega trends only punctually rise over years and decades economic or political or uh, in a recent situation health related shocks can trigger new mega trends as drivers of change and innovation that is the reason the impact of consumers markets and technologies for the next decades that is the thing here we are focusing uh, first if we think on that uh, disruptive regulation so you know that our uh, societal way of living is more than ever influenced by continuously changing and uh, strict regulations due to pandemic uh, movement A strong artificial interventions within society comes with the potential to change it has a whole on a long term basis and could account for drastic changes in consumer behavior a short term regulatory intervention like uh, compulsory face mask uh, can trigger a setting in period which influences the new normal especially in the cowboy movie the barrier to wearing a face mask was comparably high before we were affected by covid-19 that is the thing uh, here we have uh this might change drastically in the future as a broad part of society is getting used to wearing it yes we are seeing that thing the need for regulation not only related to infection protection but also related to climate change quickly climb to the top of the public decision market agenda yes of course as a result an increase in regulations could become reality in the future to mitigate remaining risk affecting major parts of societal and uh, economical areas so uh, with this uh, we can understand that in what way we have changed that uh, this uh, under uh, disruptive regulations yes uh, because you know that uh, that mask for example wearing mask now it's compulsory whether uh, even we are thinking no i am not having like that uh, problem or i am having very uh, good uh, immunity power suppose if you have like that uh, i mean uh, perception uh, but we have to follow the regulation that is the thing we have to consider another issue here we have under mega trend that is localization so globalization has been the strategic move over the past decades however climate change has led to an increasing demand among consumers for local products and uh, uh, decelerating consumption the covid uh, moment crisis gives the trend another boost yes in some extent now we are going to prefer our local uh, products like that uh, supply chain were interrupted and the customers experienced first hand uh, the partial shortage of products local production and the local supply of goods and services become more important for customers but also for uh, corporates willing to increase their resilience for potential uh, future crisis as this trend was already extending that is pre covid moment we expect that it remains a long term development likely to influence not only supply chain related topics but also customer expectations and service offerings consumers have become increasingly demanding yes the world is becoming more individualized and uh, consumers demand broad diversity of products more channels to choose uh, from 
as well as the faster delivery uh, times and transparency. Yes, we are having like this uh, a moment uh, even in present also. That is the thing here it is saying. So that is localization we are going to have feeling. That is another one that is presence uh, free living. During the recent lockdown, human experienced what presence free living actually means. Major parts of our world were or still are locked down at home and had to deal with restrictions affecting everyday life. Yes, we have locked up. Uh, as a result, the digital alternative to physical presence uh, challenged the need to appear in person, forming a trend uh, which is uh, reflected in many areas like uh, work or education or leisure. Uh, people meet virtually for work meetings, spend time with friends via Facebook or Instagram, or enjoy a concert from their living room using streaming services. Now everyone is preferring that uh, those who are very much like to music, they are having to, I mean, in their home itself, home theater or something like that. Many realizes that physical presence is not always required to achieve similar results. And this will have an impact on future consumer behavior and customer expectations towards providers of products and services. So here we expect that a presence-free living will uh, gain importance also beyond home office options. Ultimately, changing our way of doing things, the two permanently. So this is the thing we are, I mean, having in terms of change or new trend, the two, uh, we can say, mega trend. So now let me think on that the consumer trend, what actually it says. The consumer trends are sets of values which determine the future decision making of large groups of consumers. If those values change in core or another direction, we notice new consumer trends rising. An example would be the long lasting trend towards sustainability. Drastic intervention into our daily routines come with new habits and values, and some of them will remain in the future. Companies need to deeply listen to customers and their underlying values to understand which trends might become relevant. This is the thing we have to consider. So here we have one aspect that is digital social interaction. Yes, we are in. In times of social distancing, consumer quickly explore and adapt to new ways of social interaction. Video calls with large group of friends or even family board games enabled with the tools like Zoom or Facebook, etc., satisfy the demand of social interaction, whatever we are having. Although first observations indicate that currently tools employed are still far from replacing personal interactions completely. The willingness and the skills required to use video calls for varying use cases are likely to remain in a post-COVID period. This increase in digital skills paves the way to digitalize many interactions in the future, uh, where you think in uh, even cost in incentives also, uh, intensive, that are for the benefit of both consumers as well as companies. That is the thing we are having or we are feeling or we are in that. That is the thing we are moving. Uh, likewise, if you think on that value for money mentality, yes, this can also one of the important factor so here, recessions were always heavily related to and caused by decreased buying power uh, and lower buying motivation. That can also, I mean, uh, less funds available, the low willingness. That may, may, may also. Uh, in times of COVID moment, consumers tend to think twice before making a uh, purchasing decision. And major investments are likely to be postponed because of that uh, less uh, funds are available. But these are alternatives. A review of the value proposition and the targeted uh, segments also yields potential to increase perceived value. Especially when it comes to segmentation, many companies still rely on rather demographic segmentation 
criteria for example uh, age or income or uh, marital status or education or uh, locality these are the things they are going to consider however what really matters is the psychological state of consumers some of them feel that they were strongly affected by the crisis and uh, panic while other might uh, stay relaxed and uh, think long term yes some uh, persons are having like that attitude also two different uh, mindsets which require different targeting that is revising customer segment and product uh, offering uh, allows for a consistent or even increased pricing power especially as a consumer characteristics change due to the crisis leading to new potential customer segments willing to consume a product or services this is the thing uh, we can uh, observe and our value for money mentality uh, likewise uh, safety means over privacy so consumers are experiencing a new urge to actively share personal data to uh, comply with uh, current regulations for this purpose they have to share their location health and social uh, interactions related data with the uh, public institutions like uh, restaurants or bar or uh, hairdressers or uh, take part in new social uh, societal experiments represented by uh, apps uh, introduced in a different format across the globe i think now you may find uh, really more than 100 apps uh, which gives uh, direct service to you there is no any dependency to others even i think you get one message just we we come to your home and we are going to diagnose your uh, diseases by just getting uh, 10 ml of blood that way they are going to offer it so that that is the thing i think you may aware so this is the way here we are facing and then uh, this is uh, why new regulations could enable a new so societal discussion on personal data sharing uh, that can also going on a positive experience experiences with the new situation could uh, intensify this effect and uh, make generous data sharing uh, that to with the new norm especially where there is a reasonable benefits this change in perspective could trigger a mindset change not only beneficial for health purpose but uh, shaping a new uh, concept within our mind uh sorry to hear you i think here the power is disturbing one minute i will i will come back i will come back immediately sorry uh then uh, we are having that uh, community power you know that every where uh, we are seeing this thing they are having their own group uh, their own community or uh, their own friends like that we are uh, seeing it uh that too we are giving more uh, preference to that that is the thing is going on so uh i don't know whether it is right or uh, wrong but we are in that but if you think in the past the consumers connected with uh, communities for personal and commercial gain uh, to share experiences uh, or to advise uh, each other in times of covid it, it seems that society is moving close together than ever before yes of course earlier the relations is very small or less now it's very close people connect and offer to help self isolated and uh, vulnerable local uh, residents by picking up uh, shopping or uh, support uh, local institutions through actions like uh, support your local which mean 
paying for haircuts in advance or switching to takeaway options at their favorite local restaurants like that here the growing significance of communities is not new but past months emphasized their impact and underlying this i think uh, importance you may have heard some um, orphanages in bangalore those who are leading by some auto drivers or some uh, local uh, residents so they are highly focusing on that relationship that is the community power that is the thing here i can see uh that is the thing here it says so if a brand becomes an active part of community or even creates one to one on its own it can multiply the outcome of its uh, marketing efforts i uh, hope you are understanding in what way that uh, word brand is using uh, the rise in community power is good starting point for finding ways to leverage uh it uh, effectively that is the thing we can think on that uh, concept like a community power the another one that is the great indoors so where we are living within a room that is the thing along with the lockdown caused by covid 19 people are forced to spend most of the time at home that is the thing here we can say the indoors their own four walls become again the primary and for many the only when you for life various activities such as work child care or free time activities consumers will now demand a lot more from their home itself i think you may be known that the work from home now most of the employees are highly preferred work from home itself here i am just saying one example size and equipment will play a central role appreciation for the advantages of living in the uh, countryside with a house and garden is likely to increase as well others will invest in their uh, city departments which we have already or uh, seen in the last couple of months as home furniture sales are uh, stay rocketed uh, but this change goes beyond this uh, trend actually the reestablished central point of living also triggers a changes related to the consumption of services or the ways we interact with uh, public or private institutions many established service offerings and uh, customers journeys are no longer aligned to the current and future way of people what they live their lives and previously uh designed customers journeys do not fit the touch points customers expect anymore this thing is not the permanent but now we have preferred that is the thing it says like that so another trend we are having that is market trend market trends are distinct patterns related to or contained within one or more capabilities of a company which are likely influences the future way of serving the market demand in the current situation the new and uncertain global context of forces organizations to rethink how they serve and interact with their customers that is the thing we have to consider this drastic change facilitates new ideas and opportunities of how companies can enhance their capabilities in the ongoing competition for customers so the first thing here uh, they are going to focus on societal responsibility societal responsibility takes a fundamental place on the agenda of corporates in times of the crisis such as the pandemic moment those fulfilling their societal duties for example by producing high demand products like uh, face masks or organizing uh, donations for people in need are likely to see their uh, commitment uh, reward is customers but also employees i think uh, they are highly focusing on uh, some uh, social issues poor student aid fund 706 error error helbeku anukuntidira 
ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಟಿಂಗ್ to loyalty goals but it also able to win new customers even in uncertain times many companies were able to react fast and did not only contribute their part but also clearly commit communicated why they did so uh, positively contributing to their brands an effective communication strategy with the clear statements in line with the brand can be key to success ಕಮ್ಯುನಿಕೇಟ್ ಆಗ್ಲೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇರ್ಲಿ ಬಿಡಿ ಅದು ಅದ ಯಾರು ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡಕ್ so the company has to think uh, 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 the current crisis could become a catalyst which uh, proves how much consumer appreciate the ethical behavior of the funds so in that way they can come to know that in what way our customers are identified our service or in what way they are following or they are uh, i mean uh, maybe a permanent customers for us here we can yeah uh, the 118 rupees ಅವ್ರು ಯಾರು ಅವರು ಬಹಳ ಬಹಳನೆ ಡಿಸ್ಟರ್ಬ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಲೈಕ್ ವೈಸ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಟ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ that is uh, generous uh, corporates generous corporates code sanded sir illa avaru yar daralli one number idre one chur phone madibittu helade olledhe eno anta yar athra one number idre avargu one chur call madibittu sir nane helthina one nimsha number tagolta idhe sir nane motion inspector one sir sir host mute mute madbodu sir avaru try madi sir host can mute ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ the use of digital and high quality content increases while traditional media consumption decreases this this has proved also so at the same time disruptive events trigger new pain points and customer needs in general and expand existing one one to other customer segments now it is totally changed while students were previously not a priority target group for self storage providers uh, now the lockdown uh, lockdown of uh, universities and uh, student housing changed this by matching superior online content with free trials companies and quickly receive access to segments they did not have access to before and increase their chances to also maintain new customers in the post covid moment so additionally uh they can invest potential 
over capacity for marketing purposes rather than waste their resources. For example, a self storage uh, provider in the United Nations now provide a time limited but free server to store a service to students uh, facing the issues of uh, storing their belongings while students housing is closed. Yes, now it is going on. Here a service many students were probably not aware of or interested in previously, but that they will reconsider in the future, especially due to trying it out in a situation which was emotionally difficult. Yes, in, some, in some extent, we have to agree with this thing because uh, it's not so easy to catch their mind. So this is the thing uh, we are having. Uh, another one that is agile beyond technology. Agile beyond technology. This can also very much important to consider under market trends. Here we have to speed up execution and creativity have probably never been more important than today. The fast changing context in which companies are currently operating yields new markets for those who are able to quickly reinvent themselves and uh, adapt to the new situation, such as uh, offering online shopping or digital service or uh, uh, consulting instead of uh, physically visiting stores. So that agile practices, which were formerly only known from technology projects, is the opportunity to quickly push initiatives to the market while engaging employees with a new responsibility to shape the future of the organization. So here the key trend, which was also observable before the pandemic, but which illustrates the benefit of the agile organizations. Speed recovery, that is the thing here we are going to say. So this can also one uh, factor we may consider under market trends. The virtual economy, we are in that now. The, in times of social distancing, Companies do not have the possibilities to physically interact with their customers. Yes, because of, we know the reason. This is particularly challenging for institutions that act as a service providers. Remote healthcare uh, has always been more of a niche market. Due to the COVID uh, moment, more and more customers are interested in remote care and Patients are increasingly drawn to the concepts of healthcare services that is common to them rather than vice versa. I mean, here everyone is preferred in that way only. They don't want to have any physical uh, interactions. That is the thing. Recent weeks have, have shown that more uh, that is conservative healthcare industry is able to rapidly adapt to these given circumstances and uh, to lay the foundation for future virtual medical online consultation. I think you have seen that in your uh, handset also. Furthermore, other industries have jumped on the uh, bandwagon as well as uh, offering innovative digital experiences such as online exhibitions, uh, concerts, or uh, wine uh, tastings. These are the things uh, we are experiencing. Uh, that's why here we, we are in the conditions like uh, a virtual economy situations. This is the thing. At the same time, we are having one more concept we have to consider under this uh, trend, uh, like uh, e-commerce push. We have to encourage or we have to focus. So that is the thing. If you all neglect, uh, I think uh, we, we know that uh, already a few will uh, neglect the fact that the pandemic is a catalyst for e-commerce activities. Okay. We, I think we may, even we may also feel like that uh, it may be a uh, pharma scandal or a medical scandal or like that in that way. Many consumers are now purchasing products online which they would have never considered before. There is thing, for example, now they are going to, uh, I think purchase uh, the groceries also. Groceries or cloth or like that. Others are increasing the frequency of online purchase in general. Companies react accordingly and invest in their digital commerce capabilities to keep up with their competitors. You know that some, um, 
I mean, app like uh, Flipkart or Amazon or uh, something, yeah, they, they are offering some season based. So through that, whether they like it or not, whether they want it or not, definitely they are going with that. That is the thing we are going to see it. Online pre-ordering combined with the in-person collections of goods is an option which has been around for more sometimes or more time, but uh, could uh, now finally become relevant for those who do not want to wait for package deliveries, but also refuse the inconveniences of in-store shopping experiences. Yes, this thing is also a meeting we are in. Uh, it is depending on uh, industry and sector it is applied to. This uh, hybrid offering could become a preferred option for many customers. Finally, this combines fast availability of products with a reasonable uh, personal effort. I mean, uh, a mix uh, many customers are currently looking for. I think you may be aware of, uh, suppose if you take any product uh, from uh, Amazon, they are giving 10 days to 30 days time to, I mean, return. So that thing, you know that. So there, I'm just joking. I'm not sure with that. Some person, suppose if they want any very uh, good camera, so they may buy through that channel. Uh, after using three days or four days, they may return us, that can also be possible, why not? So this thing is, uh, we are having that with uh, uh, e-commerce uh, transactions. Uh, that is the one win. So lastly, we are having one more trend, uh, we need to think on that, that is technology trend. Here we have first technology trend means, it represents the underlying shift, but also the emergence of new technological opportunities which are likely to be used in a future business context. Uh, this pandemic crisis emphasized how important technology is to keep the economy, but also society running. An early understanding of which technology trend, uh, trends are relevant for post-COVID-19 context will result in a competitive edge as the effective application of technology across businesses is deeply connected with business success. Business without technology is no longer conceivable. This is the statement, I think you may agree with that. So that is the thing you may consider in terms of technology. Here we have focused one concept that is streaming. Here people spend more time at home online and streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon, Prime Video, that is you know that and Sky are booming for obvious reasons. The crisis also showed that on-demand entertainment is not the only use case for streaming. With an increased ability and willingness to use streaming on the customer side, new use cases arise or become feasible. Yes, this thing is going on uh, where we are stuck with any, I mean, the social media. Here, it is caused by the need for engaging interactions in a presence free situation. Companies become creative and use the established technology to digitize their customer interactions. Some local, not regional car dealers use the momentum to digitize their uh, product presentation via social media, including question and answer sessions that you know that even in the, you may find that this thing in your Facebook uh, account. So where you browse uh, your account at that moment, you may see some uh, uh, cars or furnitures or something to sale or something like that. Or even the Snapdeal or uh, Flipkart or Amazon entering into that uh, page. That is the thing. So what actually it says, this is, the, this is an approach which could transfer into the post-COVID period actually as it enables a comparably close customer interactions at low cost. By leveraging, live streaming could bridge the gap between uh, impersonal online product research and effort intensive personal meetings. Especially the industries facing this gap might be well advised to think about the potential for their uh, specific uh, use uh, uh, cases along the customer's journey. So this thing uh, you may feel uh, where you think of that uh, a trend like uh, streaming. Another one uh, we are having that is contactless payment. Uh, due to this pandemic, 
particularly if you say that the german market they have started to adopt to contrastitis payment in every market segment even traditional opponents of this uh, technology are now starting to change their standpoint and increasing the switch to contactless payment in order to protect themselves from direct contact with uh, terminals or cash so according to one study the largest payment providers that is master card contactless payments are expected to grow rapidly furthermore mobile payment services such as phone pay and google google pay but also person to person services like paypal or venmo benefit enormously from the crisis paypal service that is venmo there is a great potential and a chance that hesitant and technology our consumers our consumers will change that mindset and adopt the technology into their daily lives in the long run this change could also open the door for for more use cases in which the inconvenient that is act of paying can be improved that can also uh, going on so a trend which may organization should be aware of to cover the even the post covid movement also that uh, whatever the consumer needs so this is the thing uh, we are having uh, just an idea under contactless payment uh, we have lastly another one under the technology trend that is uh, fast scaling commerce platforms those without any kind of online sales channels are likely to be the most affected companies in the current situation so that is the thing and offline shopping remains inconvenient due to multiple factors for example uh, hygienic uh, situation or uh, not wearing the mask or crowd or something uh, many customer groups intensify their online shopping activities although online shopping is the is uh, it's a uh, far from being is a new trend the recent increase in online shopping activity is astonishing and many organization now see the potential to absorb decreasing offline sales short term and to lay down the foundations for long term omni channel sales experience here no matter if they serve private or business customers by focusing on cloud services and pre packaged functionally functionality in the last years many technology vendors can already provide a platform which is fast to implement and ready to scale in the long term especially those organizations which were traditionally relying on offline sales can use the momentum to digitize their commerce activities this can also is happening now because Uh, they don't uh, i think it is not possible to survive for a long term so they have to consider for both offline as well as online so with this i think uh, it is the time to conclude many organizations are still tied up responding to the short term impact of the crisis to simply uh, secure the continued existence here others are already moving into the second phase of the crisis life cycle and starting recovery in which they learn from the past and start adjusting to the new business environment here we are all still in an early phases of recovery but there are already some key learnings which seem to be very clear so yes of course you agree with me suffering the key learnings for example here we can in what way we are going to learn suffering business models relying on uh, outdated uh, business assumptions and neglecting the new digital reality are likely to fall fail soon a few focus on offline activities come with high risk in uh, unprecedented times a healthy realignment 
and connection of revenue channels across digital and offline is a likely reaction based on current habits. Resilient technology platforms are crucial for future business success. Only a minority of organization is likely to succeed without them. A radical shift like the one we are currently experiencing already has a clear impact on long-term societal norms and consumer behavior. Understanding and reacting to this shift will be a key accelerator for future business success. Uh, these are the things we have to learn by having this concept. So finally, the companies that have a clear understanding of how their business context changed during the COVID crisis are able to implement the measures to prepare themselves for the future. Here it is based on the projects and research activities conducted during the pandemic crisis. We are able to provide a first set of trends and implications which are likely impacting the future of business across the industries. But it's on each individual organization to establish a way of identifying, prioritizing and leveraging the trends which are most valuable for the future. Especially innovation and technology leaders, but also marketers and those responsible for sales have a rare momentum in front of them which they can use to implement the measures required to build a strong foundation for the future. So this is the thing I just want to share with you because here, of course, e-commerce as well as the behavior of the customers is covered under this also. So with that view, I would like to say my gratitude to you in terms of the world. I thank you very much. Now, if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, of course, we the teachers or we the learners, we can share together. So whatever the thing, suppose if I am not able to answer your question. Can I have any <laughs> questions from your side? Hello? I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, audible sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So now, yeah, it's a, I think, uh, question hour moment. If you ask any questions related to whatever the thing that I have discussed or I have shown or shared, because here uh, I have focused on what is the current trends uh, by having the crisis like pandemic movement on our uh, trade and uh, business. At the same time, I have considered in what way that uh, market is changed, our technology is changed, our consumer is changed. And even uh, uh, one more that is uh, uh, what we can say, technology, oh, sorry, yeah, technology. So on that I have considered. So suppose if you have any doubts or uh, if you have any arguments or if you have any even supporting uh, information for that, please share it. No one. So everyone decided, I think already, you may, a very long voice, you have heard it, you know, maybe bored or something. At least with uh, creativity, Raise any one small question. Nana request more called that in a lap of Prashna Madienta. Yarvi style. Okay, Alige, wind up Marbidi, new arrow on the water of thanks to the job that is the country. I don't the arrow responsibility, Ruth and Sate, Aurunamuna, Jay and Mutra Mugit. Adu Ilva, Yaro, as I mark for Ilva. Sir, I am Anita. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. Nana Kelkorana, Yana Robuna, and a Kessa Pantan would have become a shimmer. Hello, Anita, no, 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 no,
ಐ ಎಮ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಸರ್ ಅನಿತಾ ಹಾಲ್ ನೀವು ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಪಿ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರೋರು ಅಲ್ವಾ ಹೌದು ಸರ್ ಗುಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಿಕಲ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ಸರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಅ ಗುಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೇಶನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಲೆವೆನ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಮೆನಿ knowledge regarding the recent trends after the pandemic so it is uh, needed actually because uh, we need to uh, know how the uh, business has been changed over the uh, this uh, pandemic so sir has given the recent data and uh, with graph and uh, good presentation with us uh, sir shared many of things many of things uh, with uh, uh, examples so for this uh, i would like to say thanks to sir on behalf of uh, ugc hrdc and on behalf of the coordinator and all uh, my co participants i like to propose a word of thanks to sir thank you very much sir thank you very much that to after 11:30 in the indirect by putting number no sir no no sir no 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 sir no sir thank you sir thank you sir technology problem namana athara disturb no sir yes sir ಅಲ್ವಾ ಶಿವಶಂಕರ್ಸ್ಟೈಲ್ so mm-hmm. what you have presented today sir that's why we are very happy to that listen that is my you. intention that is my yeah. intention as a teacher we can also do like that no, way yeah, yeah, yeah. but the preparation time is very less for me actually yeah. i am not happy with this of course i got uh, so much of material but the thing there is no time to have yes yeah, i think last uh, i think last wednesday or thursday i got this information yeah, but i have to give in a unique way that is my intention that's good sir with that i have tried i have tried but i am not happy with this of course i agree with you uh, no sir we are happy sir we are happy sir because of uh, that information is good only sir mm. we have the lot of contents it was sir, there sir. so thank you so much sir thank you very much thank sir. you sir thank, thank you sir sir, sir. Thank you. sir. okay thank, thank you sir ara idira mark mars kudrappa nam close friends kalu nagra sir ha heli ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ನಾಲ್ಕು ಒಂದ್ ಐದು ವಿಂಡೋ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇನ್ನು ತುಂಬಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಇನ್ನು ಇನ್ನು ಬಂದ್ ಸೇರ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ಯಾ ಕುತ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ಯಾ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸರಿ 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 ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಅನಂತ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಆ ಡಿಯರ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಯು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಡ್ ಹೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಿವ್ ದ ವೋಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸರಿ ಏ ಐತಪ್ಪ ಇನ್ನೂ ಒಂದು ಸತಿ ವೋಟ್ ನೋ ಸರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಓಕೆ ನೌ ಐ ಆ